Okay, hi everybody. Um, how are you all doing this morning? Sorry, there was just some camera difficulty there. Um, I hope everyone's keeping well. Again, it's Maeve and Matt here from our customer success team. So thank you so much for joining uh, this webinar. We're really excited uh, to run through this with you. Um, scarily enough, we're talking about 2021. I feel like that's still ridiculous considering 2020 happened so quickly, but also didn't happen in, at all. But here we are. Um, obviously, you know, preparation is key and that's one of our main messages if you've joined any of our webinars before. Um, so that's why we really just wanted to get this out here now so that you have these next kind of four or five weeks um, to prepare for reopening in January. This will be a different type of January. Usually January is quite mental for businesses in this industry. Um, but I, I do think that there's definitely ways for us to support you all in making sure that you have a successful kind of new year um, buzz. So I'll pass you over to Matt who's going to run through uh, what we will be talking about today. Hopefully you will find it helpful. And yeah, I'm looking forward to just giving um, as much information uh, to you guys so that you can start getting preparations in place. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, so definitely, um, definitely on route to a kind of a better 20, better, better year ahead. You know, this year has been pretty challenging for everyone, but that's the way we're going to look at it. It's going to be January's busy anyway, but it's just going to be busier than normal and everyone wants to get back to, to normal life. So to kind of go from there, we'll just uh, touch on the agenda for today. So we're basically going to look at like building resilience and adaptability for 2021. Um, we're then kind of touch through the agenda and everything will kind of flow into one another. So it's about operating effectively during COVID-19. Um, and we'll talk about various channels and ways that you can use the Glowfox platform to ensure that you are doing this and to keep everybody as engaged as possible. And then essentially it's, it's, it's kind of the same as most years, you know what I mean? It's the same, it's the same uh, flow that we're going to follow. It's about getting everyone energized for the, for the new year then. So back to the gym, uh, back to doing something, everyone's eating a load of turkey, um, everyone's eating a lot of stuffing and gravy and they, they, they need to, to lose those pounds. I know that I definitely do um, or will do uh, after the end of this month. Anyway, uh, sales strategy then to attract new clients. How can we use some of those tools that we have in Glowfox to help attract and bring new clients into the studio? And then that kind of follows into the resources that we have available, not just the, the resources on Glowfox, but also the tools that we provide as a business um, and articles that we provide working with businesses in, in the same industry. And then finally, we can touch on some questions. So what I will say is if you do have questions throughout, uh, I know that I'm someone who's got a bit of a goldfish memory sometimes. So if you do, if you do have a question and you want to ask it, like by all means, do pop it into the question box. And um, we can always circle back. And if in the moment um, it makes sense, we'll, we'll answer it there and then. So I encourage you to engage and I'll pass back to Neve to, to get us stuck into this. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Matt. So um Obviously, one of probably the main things that we have learned uh, this year is to become quite resilient, both, I guess, personally and in a commercial environment. And I know Glow Fox has definitely learned and kind of enhanced on that skill that, uh, that, that we already have in place. But we definitely had to tap into those resources a little bit more by becoming a more resilient and uh, adaptable kind of company to ensure that we created, you know, products um that would help businesses um to also become quite agile so you know one thing that everybody has obviously had to adapt to is that massive transition online um which obviously happened due to some of the forced closures of uh the physical locations of uh, gyms and studios alike so um probably the, the main probably buzzword that's kind of happened within Glow Fox this year is this hybrid fitness business or this hybrid fitness schedule. So we'll be touching a little bit on that, on how you can, you know, enhance and prepare for 2021 by adopting that type of strategy. Um, obviously, clear communication as well is so, so important. Um, over communication is key. So just making sure any changes you have in place that, um, you know that you communicate those clearly and Matt's going to touch on the different ways that you can do that within Glowfox and lastly is obviously there's been an awful lot of kind of a call and requirement for you know more enhanced safety procedures this year naturally uh, so it's all about just mitigating risk for both you and your client um, and which will all you know tee up to success uh, for your business. So you know, a hybrid fitness business model, um, this is obviously adopting to, you know, running all of your classes and still ensuring that clients are benefiting from the value of your skill set and your goal as a business through, you know, I guess a camera or through a video or through a, a streaming service link. So 
you know, again, it's just making sure that you have all of those steps in place. Um, you know, an awful lot of what we will run through here is going to be a high level overview, but a very much kind of a checklist of how to make sure that you are prepared for 2021. So should you ever need a little bit more information about how to introduce a hybrid fitness model, do reach out to us or go onto our knowledge base, which we will uh, run through different kind of areas towards the end, as Matt said, about some additional resources we have. Um, but definitely, if you haven't, you know, kind of gone into that uh, hybrid business model, you know, I would really strongly recommend looking into that and, and seeing if this is going to be a viable, uh, you know, I guess, a revenue source for you. Um, if it's the case that your business is closed, um, you know, it's something that we have to kind of come uh, or become accustomed to with the, with the fact that we will have to go through these temporary periods of closed uh, locations to then opening again. So it's just a matter of having all of the precautions in place so that you can easily adjust between an in-studio location and also you know, uh, online. Um, that being said as well, with uh, your in-studio locations, it's really important to have all of your safety precautions in place. And I know we're gonna talk about that later on as well. Um, so that's one thing just to make sure that you you have all of those preparations in place for your hybrid business model. I'll run through, um, or I, excuse me, I get, Matt was going, is going to run through just how we can effectively communicate now with our clients as well um, while we're trying to just get prepared for 2021. Perfect. Thanks, Neve. And, and just to kind of piggyback off what Neve was saying there with the hybrid business model, um, if, if you're someone who's kind of looked at it, but you haven't yet like made the decision to go it live, definitely get in touch with us, um, you know, at the customer success team. Like I've had numerous conversations with people that were kind of scared or, you know, on the unknown and they don't really know how they're going to do it. But what you actually learn is the hybrid model can kind of just spin off the one you currently have. And it's just a few tweaks. I know a lot of studios that now just run uh, a class that's physical in person, but will also run a hybrid, you know, an online version of that for those. So that way you can kind of, essentially it's created a new customer. There's, there is people at home that don't want to go into a gym anymore. They like the, the time it saves and all that kind of stuff. So definitely get in contact if it's something that you, you know, you hadn't yet figured out how you were going to manage it because it's uh, probably a lot less of a hurdle than you actually think. Um, but yeah, the next, this kind of follows into then like clear, clear customer communication, because this is another thing that gyms have kind of, or studios I've worked with have, have kind of had challenges with at start and then have kind of pushed through those. So clear communication, making sure that we keep communications consistent with members um, and, and choosing the right mediums for those messages. So what I mean by choosing the right mediums is obviously on Glowfox, we've got our member app, we've got the Glowfox Pro app, we've got SMS, we've got email, uh, and just making sure to kind of I would say use a bit of all of them and um, everybody's different. Not everybody likes, you know, just one style. Some people prefer emails some people prefer a text message. Um, so definitely, again, if you're unsure on what you, you, you should use there, again, get in contact with us. We'd be more than happy to have those conversations. Um, but the main thing we're kind of looking at here is that, yeah, clear, com clear communication um, means sending regular updates to, to people about the gym's reopening, whether you're closing, that you're, Probably the main one there is letting people know you're still operating in some way, shape or form. And um, so if we look here and start off with the Glowfox Pro app, um, you can make changes straight from the client's profile. I don't know if anybody knew this, but you can actually, you know, if you just hit the, the phone number of a user from the Pro app, you can call a member straight from the profile, which means if people don't show up or anything like that, you, you do have that information to kind of engage with them. Um, and the one thing I would always say is those kind of more personalized things kind of hit home with people a little bit more. Um, if you're editing or deleting classes, you know, it's something that I've seen happen a little bit more at the, at the moment is time changes or things like that. So just making sure to communicate that with your members, again, probably hitting multiple forms so that you make sure you do capture that each type of user that you have. Um, if you are, um, you know, discussing things with clients, potentially upsells, new packages, remember just to leave those interactions like notes on the, the, the Glowfox dashboard. Um, and then finally, we will again cut back to this. I think we touched back to this on probably most webinars that we have, but the filters, if you are using our sales and marketing tools uh, and you have those filters on the leads and the clients list, like do, do use those a lot. They're really powerful to get in those certain segments of particular clients that you're looking for. And again, we can touch on some of that um, later on. Then there's kind of the newer, the newer areas. If, if those of you who are around for the last lockdown, um, you know, you might have you might have been familiar with what we had. It was our blog section previously. We kind of flipped this on its head and, and, and we've we've changed that 
and it's now the community section which lives at the bottom part of your app so you know you have your list of classes and trainers and at the bottom there you see in the right hand corner there's store and the community um, and what you can do here is essentially bank pre-recorded content that you have, whether it's pre-recorded classes, uh, warm-ups, warm-downs, and you can kind of put them behind a paywall. And what we mean by that is you can put them behind a paywall where somebody has to have a membership to access it. So pay-as-you-go users won't have access to this content, but your members that are paying you subscriptions or paying you yearly uh, annual fees, they will get access to all this content right from their app. Um, and it's a really great way to kind of keep people engaged who aren't there potentially in person, and then to kind of push these as additional resources on your uh, channels as well, whether it's your website, you're, you're pushing it to people on, on the phone themselves, sending them emails, whatever that might be. It's, we've seen people really adopt to this and use it. And then finally is, is the push notification. So if you, if you are creating that content on Glowfox and your community tab, the first thing to do would almost be to copy and paste that and share it on your push notifications. So you create an article, the first step I would always take then is once it's created, put out a push notification to everyone to let them know that it's there and just start pushing people towards it. The more your members start using it, the more word of mouth will work. And then it just becomes this, what, what we want it to be. It's a, another community section. And um, so it's, it's really powerful. And then the next thing I'd say is any feedback you have there on how we use it, let us know. We're always looking to improve these. I don't know, Neve went off mute there. So I think she might have something to chime in. No, <laughs> no do you know what it was? It's just that I'm absolutely obsessed with, um, uh, where are we? The, <laughs> the community section. I think it's so good at the moment. And I think it's just something that just an awful lot of the customers that we've had, they're like, oh, listen, you know, people are doing it for free. Why, well, why should I even charge my memberships or why should I even, you know, people are just doing credit packs and they're not going in for our membership. So, you know, we're, we're missing out an awful lot on money there. And I think it's just by this option where, where you can restrict content to members only, that is you enforcing your value as a business. And that is you kind of reminding clients that, you know, you are like a service and that, you know, you should receive, you know, payment for that service because you are adding value to that client. Um, it, you know, that, that, that their, their entire experience with your business. So I think um, just everything you said about the community section Matt is, is spot on and yeah I just think it's one of our um, just uh, best features so if you aren't using that and sometimes you know Matt and I will both go into the community section just simply because it's kind of like a part of our checklist now and it's uh, it's it's been really kind of underutilized to a certain degree for some clients so you know if you are on the platinum plan and you do see this community section definitely have a look on how you can optimize that so that you can start kind of I guess uh, you know, reinforcing value on your uh, memberships again. But um, yeah, so sorry for jutting in. I just think no. it's, it's definitely something to kind of bring to everybody's attention here. So yeah, I'll pass it back to you, Matt, just about other ways how we can <laughs> communicate with our clients. Yeah, so the other two are, uh, I'm sure people have, have kind of noticed we've brought SMS to the table over the last kind of year or so. Um, and SMS, like, while push notifications are great and it's great that people have their apps and log in and check them, SMS is that little bit more, in your face kind of if you get what i mean like most of us the one thing i don't ever leave unread is text messages um i think that's probably just the times that we're in um you know literally addicted to checking my phone if i have a message i can't leave it there so that's why you see this kind of 98 percent open right so you, you more or less know when you send someone a text message they've seen what you said so it's not about you know overloading them with information it's about putting clear actions in front of them if a message is short sweet and has a clear action I'm much more likely to click through to it and be like, oh, what's this? I'm interested. Um, and that's why, that's the way I would use text is keep it, keep it simple, have a kind of goal at the end of it. Uh, and again, if you want to talk SMS, it's something that I've, we've both had a lot of conversations around recently. And I've really seen the value of studios that have started to use it. Um, and definitely something to, to look into for kind of the January period. Um, if you're pushing memberships in the new year, if you're, running deals or promotions, this is a great way to get it in the eye and make it easy for people to, to book. Um, Mark, yeah, so that's, that's the SMS is the main one I wanted to cover there. So that's, that's cool. Uh, and now I'll pass it back to, to Neve there. We can, that, you're yeah. totally, totally fine. <laughs> um, yeah. 
I think I, I'm just, again, just super excited to kind of run through different ways that we can make sure that you are super prepared for 2021. So um, lastly, I think the way that you can ensure that you are, you know, completely prepared and, you know, being agile and getting completely set up for the new year um, is to mitigate risk as much as possible. Obviously, that's been the main kind of question this year. It's like, oh, how do we protect ourselves? How do we protect our clients and so on? So, you know, this was a feature that was uh, very much re requested pre-COVID, um, but it just it made so much more sense to release um, because of COVID as well. So um, with our e-agreements feature, essentially you're able to capture the signatures of your clients for your membership terms, conditions and your studio waivers. Obviously with your studio waivers, you want to make sure that they're fully updated as possible. So, you know, if you haven't, you know, done that yet, or if you're opening, Again, in January, you kind of a brand new uh, conditions for 2021. That's where you need to update them. And that's where you need to kind of very much think about how you're going to capture this information. Because there's one thing about, you know, updating these forms and so on. But you definitely want to make sure that you have a client, you know, being accountable for the changes that you have made as well. And that's what I quite like about e-agreements is that you are introducing accountability, not just for, you know, yourself, because you are very much kind of putting your word to these forms. So whatever you are putting in there, like you do need, need to stand by that as well. But it's also introducing a client accountability. Like there's different ways now that you can introduce different clauses within your studio waiver, which I think is quite an attractive feature because instead of just having an entire list, which I'm a massive culprit for of just running through and saying, fine, okay, and not even giving it a second look. Now, by introducing these different clauses, you're very much ensuring that clients are paying attention to everything that's in your uh, uh, studio waiver. So very much um, something to consider if you are trying to enhance and prepare and kind of mitigate any risk for yourself as a business going forward in 2021. And lastly, um, it does streamline the entire client experience. You know, a clients uh, have a little bit of, I guess, additional faith and trust in the business because they know that you're taking this seriously if they see all of the steps and precautions you're taking to make sure that you that you know your physical location and even your online experience is safe and is secure and um, that's something that's going to kind of stand to you as well as a business so by having let's say different platforms of even on the GlowFox Pro on the kiosk and having you know all of these uh, documents sent to clients through an email you know, it's definitely going to streamline their entire experience as they sign up, if it's the case they're a brand new client or even a pre-existing client as well. So that's just something to think about as you are preparing for 2021. Um, so uh, we're going to move on to a little bit more kind of managing a more physical location with uh, uh, COVID-19 and how you can ensure that everything's in place um, for the new year. Um, so I know that uh, the majority, particularly here in Ireland, uh, but the majority of places that an awful lot of people are, are operating at a, a reduced capacity. Um, so that's just something to think about. And I know, Matt, that we've touched base an awful lot on this. So I'll let you jump in here just to kind of run through your experiences of how your customers have kind of started managing with COVID and their actual physical location. Yeah, it's it really does vary from country to country, as you said. Um, it depends on what sort of lockdown restrictions are on. Um, you know, for example, I know that yesterday I was I was work talking to a few clients um, and a few colleagues as well based in Singapore, the, the, the gym was. And I know in Singapore at the moment, they're kind of on that peak where they've they're kind of a bit ahead of everybody else. And they've kind of already returned to this uh, physical gym. Now, that might change again and, and everybody is ready for that. But what we've seen there is is an appetite for, for people to return. And under these new capacity restrictions, one thing that I've kind of seen some gyms being able to do or studios is actually have more classes take place during a day at a lower capacity. Um, and what we actually have seen there in some cases is increased member um, participation. People have the appetite to return. So ensuring that we have those capacity restrictions in, in place and we have clear schedules with cleaning times in between, it's enabled some studios actually almost to grow their business. So we have to look at it from that perspective as well. You know, in times that are challenging, any recession that comes around or anything like that, these are actually opportunities for new businesses to grow and, and, and new business to come into play. Um, so that's that's one way. And then as you can see here, capacity management, there are other ways you can do this. It's not just about making the class size bigger or smaller. Uh, I've seen some studios adopt the penalty form where, you know, if you no show to a class that there might be a charge or if you no show to a class that you might not be allowed book for a certain. There's there's things that are there um, that you can manage on your own side, putting in charges and things like that. 
Um, I obviously, think it's really, oh, sorry, Matt. I no, think it's got... really important to note, though, about what, what you just said about the penalty system, because, you know, obviously businesses are so hungry and eager for clients to come in and that's that makes total sense but there's still a piece where you're allowed to take control and manage your business as well mm -hmm. to ensure you are set up for success because you can't have let's say a very laxed you know a cancellation policy that really needs to be tightened up so that you can ensure anybody who's booking is attending and you're getting that revenue from let's say any like pays you go class or a credit and so on so i think just to kind of put a little bit more stress and emphasis on that penalty system. If it's case it was never really used before, now is definitely the time to start thinking about introducing that. Um, so yeah, I think that's just a, a really key point there, Matt. Yeah, 100%. And then um, what I was kind of following into there next is the safe operating practices. And one really cool thing I've seen um, here embodies our community tab as well. So what I've actually seen a lot of studios do, or, or, or some, and they've done it really well, is once they've got everything set up for their reopening, they've gone and created, say, a three to five minute video, giving a tour of the studio, showing the clean practices, showing the new things that they've uh, put into place, showing people in the background, working out, enjoying that atmosphere to get people excited for coming back. Because the, the reality is like, so some of us are chomping, chomping at it and can't wait. And, you know, they're not really scared. And then there's others that are. And then, and whatever side of the, line you've kind of fall on it's important to note that there's still customers on the other side so you know you don't want to just ignore a certain group of people and um, so definitely that's one thing i have seen is creating just a video of like hey we're ready for it to welcome you guys back and then give them a tour of your facility show them the things that you've done show them the that really good work that you have been doing to show them that you care and that you, you know you're creating this environment that that they're going to be able to come and work work out freely in and I think that's a really cool piece because it's the, to me, that shows the human side of any business. And it's not just, we're open again, come back. You know what I mean? It's like, we're open, we're here, and we're actually here to, to care for you. Um, so I think that's really cool and, and definitely something to look at, um, which kind of follows into the next one. They put members at ease, you know what I mean? Um, and, and kind of follow into that is the updated terms and conditions, the, the clarity of everything, putting a bit of onus on the use that the, the, the person as well, because in this modern world, we're all guilty of just click, 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 accept, accept, accept. Um, and sometimes we don't really know what we have accepted. And that's kind of what our terms and conditions and e-signatures do. It kind of forces that, um, that onus to be put on, take a few more minutes to read what the small print is and, and agree to it. And yeah, and that and frequent communications comes into it again. So constantly being in contact, updating your members, letting them know what's going on, any changes that take place. Um, again, really, really important. Um, yeah, so yeah, I love that, Matt. I think it's, um, you know, it, it's definitely what you just said, like everybody is so excited for things to go back to normal, but obviously there needs to be kind of precautions in place. So it's not to be the killjoy with those precautions, but more look at it as a way that, you know, this is going to kind of tee you up for success because if people see that you're making an effort and you are trying to kind of, I guess, adapt with the new way of working um, for their own safety and for the safety of their staff as well. I think that's a message that, you know, that you definitely want to ensure that you are putting across. Um, so I think probably from this webinar, you've already gathered that I'm extremely excited for 2021 and for 2020 to say, see you later. Um, so with that, I think that an awful lot of your clients will probably want to get that same kind of excitement and energy going forward. Maybe if they're a bit like myself, they're already at that energized state and they might not need additional kind of, you know, encouragement. But if it's the case that they are kind of in that um, slump and in that rut, you know, January still is generally a new time or kind of a, a clean slate for an awful lot of clients. So it's still it's still important to kind of make sure that you are introducing that uh, energized tone, let's say, with some of the uh, changes that you are bringing into place. So, I mean, while an awful lot of, let's say, uh, 2021 is becoming a little bit more kind of, a, I guess, adapting or is adapting to, let's say, the new way of working at the moment, it's still important to still think about new ways of working that works with you know, this new environment, uh, you know, keeping things different, keeping things exciting, because we have seen that some people do find, let's say, online classes, the, the engagement can drop a little bit there. So think about new ways that you can ensure that that engagement is still going, you know, for in-studio classes as well. If you used to kind of adopt or kind of do a big, you know, event, 
try and think of different ways to still keep that community engagement uh, alive, you know, even in a more kind of reduced capacity or still adapting to, you know, I guess precautions and so on that are in place. So, you know, do think about how you can still keep your clients engaged. So that's like running competitions, you could have like your most I don't know, like as many online classes, whoever gets, you know, uh, you know, books into as many online classes in a certain week, gets free merchandise, gets free credit onto their profile, whatever that may be, you know, listen to your clients. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of, you know, trying to find out what your clients actually want and what they need. And that will then help you shape your decisions. So, you know, try and be as innovative as you want. It doesn't have to be massive amounts of like kind of creativity it could be something very simple I know my local uh, uh, gym they very much adopted like steps at a step challenge they adopted you know you know try and attend as many online classes a week as you can and all of that so you know there are different ways and that that relates to well, let's say you know their business model and so on so try and just introduce as many kind of changes as you can and um, that makes sense to your business and that will still keep your clients engaged so it's just about really starting the new year with a little bit more of a positive tone that things are going to improve that we're that you are prepared as a business to kind of uh, be uh, be prepared for whatever 2021 is going to bring um so some of the messages you can contact them, and I know Matt has already highlighted different ways you can communicate with your clients. Um, again, as Matt said, they can be quite quick and simple messages, uh, you know, making sure that they either have an offer, a clear call to action by attaching a link or a membership there. You know, you can have a January group challenge. Again, you're kind of enhancing the community feel there. Um, you can bring a friend so that features available in GoFox and you can have that toggled on, let's say for a week, for a month. It doesn't have to be forever. It can just be a temporary period. Um, and you can just try and engage in different ways that you can, you know, just change things up a little bit. So it's not the same kind of monotony of running online and in studio classes um, that there are different changes here and there. That's going to change things up a little bit. So obviously you can you know communicate this very clearly through you know our mailchimp integration through push notifications sms as 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 matt said you know jumping into those different channels are as always super helpful just to kind of change it up a bit so you, so again you you and yourself are energized and you know adapting to changes in how you communicate with your clients as well um so we're, I'm going to pass you over uh, to uh, Matt, who's going to run through, let's say, some of our sales strategies, because as I've just mentioned, January still is, you know, clean slate for people, new year, new you, all of that jazz. So it's important to kind of have all those preparations in place for trying to get people onto these sales strategies uh, or for, for trying to get people onto, let's say, these memberships by using these sales strategies, excuse me. So, you know, that's kind of adopting into some of our techniques and some of our features that we have in Glowfox. So I'll just let Matt run through some of those of, of how you can make sure that you are fully equipped in terms of your skill set to be prepared for, you know, any kind of uh, seal questions or seal challenges. Yeah, brilliant. So, to, to, I mean, straight away here, like one of the one of the big ones that I see from this period of time that we're in at the moment is that bring a friend. Right now, you have tons of gyms that have had to close. Maybe some people haven't gone back to their local gym because it's too far away or it was near their old office that they used to commute to. So there is a portion of people that have kind of been forced into changing their gym. So for that reason, I would definitely get an offer there for, you know, if you bring a friend, um, you get a free week and like that last one we saw you enter a competition to win a free month because what you're doing there is you're bringing in someone who's already a, an active member and then, a, and then and then a new lead so each time you're getting two for one essentially you're getting a new lead that's a potential person that you now could win over and, and have them as a client and then you could do the same thing with them um, and that's a really big one that's that was one that a lot of gyms I've spoke to have said they said that initially they were kind of scared about potential uh, clients leaving but what they found is for everyone that they do have leaving, there's also an opportunity to win someone else uh, from a different studio. So there's definitely chop and changing happen now. So it's a good time to have those deals. Um, the most effective way of, of, of this is definitely through our sales and marketing tools. Um, 100 percent these lead capture forms that you see here um, on the left hand side of the screen. What that does is essentially just simplify the process of someone who's coming to your website for the first time and signing up for a trial. Basically, with the lead capture form attached to a trial, somebody can sign up from not being a member to being on a trial membership and booking in within 90 seconds. That short period of time is crucial because it makes 
it easier for the person just to sign up if they're just interested. But once they've signed up, you've got their information and you can begin engaging them. And, uh, and then it's, you know, then it's more up to you. Like, how, how can you get that person to kind of feel like they need, they, they, they like you enough to sign their name. So they are, there's obviously some sort of interest there and it's about teasing that out. Um, so definitely getting your lead capture forms updated. If you have sales and marketing tools, yet you haven't maybe updated this in a while or thought about it, definitely get in touch with us. There's probably a few tweaks that can be made straight off the bat. Um, and then the other side of this is there's that free trial or paid trial side of things. So some studios like to offer both, some like to offer one or the other. Um, I would always say a combination works. Again, it's capturing multiple types of people. Um, Standing out from the crowd. So this goes back to what I was saying there. You know, again, if you have content and you've done all this great work to make your your venue friendly and and you know safe for your members to be in, like show that. Like keep letting your members know that the environment's ready for them, and the practices that you've put in place to make sure that they're going to be safe and enjoyable. Use that as your kind of as leverage, essentially. Um, I know a lot of studios are potentially just opening their doors and trying to get back to it, but let yours know that you're going that step further to take, take the care for them and, and that that's the most important thing to you. And then it's just the new year promotions, free trials, buddy passes, discounts, you name it. Um, uh, you know, it, again, if you don't know which one will work best for you, definitely get in touch with me or Neve. I would advise, you know, different ones depending on the scenario for you. But again, the basic that I would always say is, probably potentially have a combination of a paid trial and a free trial you, they are two different user types i think um and it just kind of encompasses a bit of both but make sure to use the restricts to one purchase option on both of them so that you don't get the user that goes from the free trial to the paid trial um because then that, that that's just something to be aware of there is an option to restrict your your banks of memberships to one um so that they can't go and take every free trial that you have yeah, I think that's um, spot on, Matt. I think uh, definitely, I know you and I have talked about this an awful lot, even in terms of like kind of reopening strategies for businesses who were closed and coming, you know, out of let's say certain lockdowns. For me, I'm a massive fan of the paid trial. I think it just makes so much more sense. The quality of the lead that you're getting is much stronger, even though you may not get not a high volume of them. And it also just kind of reduces any of that kind of uh, I guess money hungry kind of environment that can come in whenever you are let's say asking a client for their payment details if you are trying to uh, process a, a membership whenever they're there and um, so definitely having their credit card on file um, it, it really really helps uh, in terms of kind of just easing those kind of conversations of just hey yeah that's no problem I can add that membership onto your plan so yeah I think um, all of those sales strategies I think sometimes we can get so focused and rightly so on you know you know getting the business you know in place getting your online sorted getting your in studio sorted so but there's still ways to kind of still think about how can I you know effectively sell these memberships and sell and um, the service that we are offering so um you know an awful lot of the, the information we've, we've gathered here has come from let's say some of our blogs and other webinars as well and um, but do reach out and kind of look at some of our blog content because it's so valuable so if you haven't seen any of that definitely um, try and kind of run through any of those um Lastly, this is just, I guess, a quick, you know, I guess, reminder for those who, let's say, have already ticked all the boxes and are, you know, really trying to like, okay, we've done that. We are thrived through lockdown. We've thrived through 2020. That's absolutely brilliant. And you're like, what next? How can we change this up? Definitely, once you've kind of started and made all of these changes, and even if you, um, even if you haven't put any of these changes in place and you want to see whether these changes are working and you want to see, you know, you know, is this actually, you know, the right call for me? Am I making the right decision? Glowfox Insights or Advanced uh, Reporting Platform is going to help you make those smarter decisions and kind of give you that extra clarity. So with our uh, advanced reports, you're going to have, you know, a wide range of, uh, of, of I guess, cohorts and kind of categories such as member activity, you know, sales reports, uh, retention, uh, lead acquisition, your member demographics, so that's going to help you make smarter decisions whenever it comes to paid, uh, you know, advertisement and so on. So there's an awful lot of content in here that in turn is going to help you make smarter business decisions, let's say whenever it comes to, you know, what memberships are most popular, what class performances are most popular. So again, after all of the work that you're doing in terms of just keeping your business running, 
you want to make sure that you're kind of reporting on it effectively as well so that the next steps and the next changes that you introduce are done with kind of very much you know evidence and data to kind of back your choices so you know if you haven't heard about Go Fox insights do reach out to our customer success team at and myself and our other customer success managers um you know have been working closely with our product team and our engineering team to ensure that this uh feature is as advanced and kind of as, as supporting clients as much as possible or customers as much as possible so if you haven't heard of this reach out to us and we can try and get a demo going and get this set up for you so you can start making better decisions um in the new year so as uh, Matt and I have already kind of mentioned, an awful lot of the content that we've pulled here is a quick overview and summary of, let's say, a wider range of topics that we've run this year. Um, but definitely, if you want to learn a little bit more about any of these features that we have uh, brought to your attention here, uh, all of the support, if you want to learn a little bit more about it, is on our knowledge base. The knowledge base has a wide range of supportive content there. You can see just from this quick image that it has general kind of back to basics information to let's say COVID related matters to just general kind of how can I succeed with Glow Fox? All of these details are there. So do um, kind of check that out. And of course, if you ever want to kind of learn a little bit differently in terms of getting a little bit more marketing content and kind of a little bit more data based behind or and kind of, I guess, figures and so on, you know, do uh, check out our blog. And uh, if, if podcasts are your thing, I know I'm, I'm a big fan of a podcast. Um, and definitely touch uh, base with our podcast channel and um, you can listen to some leading experts and their opinions on certain topics as well. So it's always good to hear how other people are performing and kind of managing their business. So definitely want to uh, look in on. So um, I'm going to just run through and kind of ask, let's say, if I know there's kind of one or two questions coming in here. Um, but hopefully that was, uh, quite, again, quite a high level review. But if anybody's any questions, uh, please do uh, send them in. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Um, so some of the questions that have just come in is, uh, I guess, are just about the sales strategies that we have and, you know, choosing which uh, or choosing what kind of sales strategy is best for you. So I know Matt touched on that a little bit um, about that. Obviously, lead capture forms are the best way to effectively capture all of your leads. Um, but if that uh, feature isn't available to you and you don't want to um, upgrade your plan with Glowfox, there is another webinar that's there on, let's say, just your general kind of website health check. And that's just ensuring that you have Glowfox integrated in all and as many platforms as you can, simply so that there is a conversion point for your client so that they can say, oh, I want to register or book into this class and so on. So, um, you know, if lead capture forms aren't there for you, um, then definitely just make sure that you have your Facebook, you know, linking out to Glowfox, your Instagram bio, wherever it is your main hub of in kind of, I guess, attention and, and attraction your, to your clients is. Um, definitely just make sure that that's integrated with Glowfox. And if you're not uh, an expert in terms of web development like myself, uh, definitely do reach out to us because we have our web development team who are more than happy to support you with any kind of additional um, tasks there. So I'm just conscious of time. So for any of the questions, I will get back to some of our clients just by email. Um, thank you so much for uh, you know staying on so long and uh, running through this. I hope everybody um, stay safe and is getting prepared for the next kind of couple of weeks and coming up to Christmas and so on. Um, and of course, if you have any questions about how you can ensure you have, let's say your 2021 playbook, if you already have ideas and you want to run them past us, this is what we're here for. Um, so please do let us know and we'd be more than happy to support you. So with that, thank you so much and we'll leave you all be and yeah, take care of yourselves and we'll speak soon. Thanks everyone. Take care. Thanks everyone. Bye.